Sorry, did I have a question? You aren't recording now, are you? Uh, I same potion talk reminder for your recording. I am recording, yes. Okay. Okay, so, getting started. So, breaking out of a double team, for this training I'm going to be teaching you how to deal with it, how to break out of it, giving you guys the awareness and strategy that you guys need to direct your platoons to deal with it the best. Right, so first thing, what is a double team? Double team, I would say, is when both of the other opponent factions are focusing on you uh, to an extreme degree, right? We have it's planet side, it's a three-way three -way faction game, so there's always going to be some some double teaming going on at all times, but when you really, really want to start worrying about it is when that double team is focused largely on you, when there's not a whole lot of fights for the other factions, and most of the fights are on your borders. So with that said, like, the, the most important thing here, guys, that I'm going to be reiterating in different ways through this is keeping calm, right? This is, this is for the platoon leads especially, but also just for everybody else. Just make it really, really easy for everybody, and be calm, be collected. It's a double team, it's a game, and uh, yeah, that's, that's honestly the best strategy right there. But... If you guys are your lead, if you're a platoon lead or a squad lead, first thing you guys want to do when you guys notice that there is a double team happening is to take note of what you have, right? So that's going to mean a few different things. Number one, what is your platoon cohesion like? If you have people kind of all over the map, now's a good time to start rounding them up and telling them, you know, hey guys, things are getting tense here, we all need to be together and work as a group. This is going to mean sending out warnings for people if, um, you know, if they're not joining right away, just telling people, hey, you know, seeing you not following waypoints or whatever. You don't have to, you know, point out anybody specific, but just sending a warning for anybody not currently with the platoon, you'll be kicking people in a few minutes or whatever. And the main point is just to quickly get cohesion up as quickly as possible. And they don't join, you kick them, and when they want to join, they will, uh, they can, as long as you're not banning them. After that, you want to look at what bases you currently have and what you don't have. So if everyone wants to, please open up your maps. So if we look at Hassan here, this, uh, it basically just opened up. The alert just started, so we're not really in a double team at the moment. But just for theory's sake, you know, what bases do we have right now? We have Hade Skydock, that's one of our important bases. We have Fort Drexler, which is the other important base. So looking at this right now, we're actually doing pretty well. If a double team were to start right now, we have our outpost bases. And that's that's going to be one of the important things, is you need bases to move out of and into your opponent's lattices. Horace, can you move somebody out of Charlie real quick? But yeah, sure, no problem. So, I think I already know the answer to this, but why are those bases important, in, in your opinion? So the reason they're important is for things like the large outposts especially, referencing Hayed Skydock, for one, they have more than one point. So they're going to usually at least have three bases, for the lar or the three points, I should say not bases, three points on each of the large bases, if not four. If you look on Amorish on Split Peak, it actually has four points. But for Hayes Godok, you'll only be seeing three, and that's the most common number for most of the larger bases. But the reason they're important in having the three points, they're a lot harder to take. Holding just one point on a large outpost extends the capture timer by minutes. It's a lot um, so these tend to be very, very big pop sinks that the fights can go on for a very long time. That gives you time to save them, it gives you time to work around them, so they're very, very nice um, checkpoints. They're very nice 
Yeah, checkpoints is a good word. It's 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 a place that kind of really defines where your border is. If you ho hold that, the other faction's gonna have a very hard time breaking into the bases that follow it. Does that make sense? Yep. Is there any relationship between the and the lattice and that, or is that something you're gonna get into further as far as the lattice relationship to those? Uh, how do you mean by lattice relationship? So like, let's take Fort Drexler, right? Fort Drexler, once you take it, will allow yeah, the enemy the, uh, to split up. The link in the outfit description isn't working. Sorry, say it again, the outfit chat was gone. I was saying that Fort Drexler, for example, once you take it, the enemy can split into three separate bases and then kind of work through three separate lattices and things like that. Um, is that something that you take into consideration for that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, using Hate Sky Doc as a, a reference, you take a big base, you can go into Shock Intel Hub, Vex Biologics, and East Aiken Storage Depot. So yeah, absolutely correct. Taking big bases, it'll open up various lattices. Um, it's not the only bases that do that, but definitely, definitely, it, it's the same thing as the checkpoint, right? Checkpoints actually, I'm liking that word more and more the more I think about it, it's just a very, um, yeah, it, it opens up into different lattices, it makes it harder for them to get into, especially because if you take Hate Sky Dock, the next base is going to be Construction Site Beta, but that's only one lattice, right? And just kind of from a left to right perspective, um, NC, NC has to go through more bases to get through Hate Sky Dock than we have to to start working off of Hate Sky Dock, so absolutely. And you're saying choke point, right? Not checkpoint. Yeah. Both yeah, are applicable, point, I think. Point, yeah. I was saying checkpoint, but choke point is definitely... There was a word I was looking for, and I think that was it, so yeah. I was mainly just asking since we're recording to make sure it's the people who might have sure. understood it. Got it. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Um, so, moving on. So that's kind of what your your base layout is going to be, right? Do you have your stronghold bases? That's going to be your large outposts like Fort Drexler or Hate Sky Dock. It's going to be possibly an amp station like Hurricane Amp Station, or it's going to be tech plants, which on our lattices is going to be the Ganon tech plant or Ganon tech plant to our south. So it's this this isn't um, this is mostly just taking note of what you have, right? I'm not necessarily going into what you need to take right now. This is very analytical. You've noticed the double teams going on. What 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 do you have? Right? So what's your platoon cohesion like? What do you have? What bases do you have? So once you've taken note of what bases you have, you're gonna want to look at the alert timer, check to see how long is left on that, assuming the double team wasn't happening right away, right? It might happen at 40 minutes left in the alert, it might happen 20 minutes left in the alert. Depending on how long that is, you're it's going to impact what you have time left to do. Do you have time to go for big cutoffs? Do you have time to go for stronghold bases that aren't currently yours? Do you, like, if you don't have Hate Sky Dock and there's only 20 minutes left, you're gonna have to look at the alert timer, timer and the map and decide if it's something you want to go through. Once you've looked at the alert timer, you're gonna start asking things in your platoon. You're gonna ask, you know, do you have any router runners? Is anyone willing to build any router bases? They're going to be very, very useful. And the routers, in case anyone doesn't know in here, it's going to be a spawn that you can construct in a base. You can place it just like any deployable, be that a beacon or ordnance dampener or something like that. So it's just the same like that. You place it and it works just like a spawn. But the nice thing is it's not restricted to deploy zones. So you can place it inside of buildings and things like that. So that's the nice thing about routers. The next thing that you guys are going to want to take note of is command chat. Is anybody else in there? Have you reached them out there yet? So you really want to make yourself present in there. And, you know, it's, yeah, like I said, make sure people are, or not make sure, but check to see if anybody else is in there. How much help do you have? And if you can coordinate with more platoons, that's awesome. Uh, one note on command chat, it's called command chat, it's it's where everyone, 
you know, who's commanding, who's leading gets together, it's not... I, I sometimes define it as more like a relay chat. It's most useful when you guys are just letting everyone else know what you're doing. So if you have another platoon that you know you're working with, you can just tell them, hey, command, I'm going to bring my platoon to Bital Stockpile, you know, and leave it at that. It's, it's very much, this is what I'm doing, I am notifying you so that if that impacts what your next step is, then I have let you know. Um, rather than, hey, platoon, I need you to come help me at this, you know, so-and-so base, um, as that, that can kind of detract from cohesiveness with other platoons, and it just makes it a lot less fun for everybody inside the chat. So that's kind of what you guys are wanting to look at in terms of analysis of the platoon. Before I start going into the next category, is there any questions? None. Perfect. Alright, so yeah, like I said guys, I'm going to make another warning with this. This is going to be uh, rather dry. Unfortunately, there's just a lot of stuff on theory that we're going to be going on with. I was kind of hoping there would be an actual double team so that we can... Um, I can actually go through some of it and demonstrate some of it, and we might do that a little bit at the end, depending on what the map looks like, but it's just, um, it's not just not as useful yet. So like I said, go and farm, there's nascens, there's the tech plant I think that has a fight for now, and we will try to get in some actual practice time at a later point. Yeah, I think, um, with our current map control, we're definitely gonna end up getting double teamed if we keep it up. Yeah, just give it some handful of minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, Horse, did we want to open up Delta Squad in case more people wanted to join? Yeah, for sure. If someone wants to uh, lead that, please let me know. Yeah, hey, I'll get it for you. Cool. And I'm just going to keep things moving along here. I'm not going to take the time to... Uh, finagle around getting that description up there, so if you can open it with just whatever description, that works perfectly, but I'm going to keep rolling along here. So, yes, yeah, so next thing, guys, as leads, you're going to want to check your platoon class composition. If you guys try and take a base that has 48 people on it, you guys are going to have a lot of struggles if you don't have enough medics. I, I cannot express enough, like, I try to have at least, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent medics in my platoons. It's just so, so useful being able to sit on, on point and have constant resin going on, constant revives. It's just going to help you stay alive on the point a lot. So yeah, make sure you guys have a lot of medics, a couple of engineers, a couple of infiltrators for radar and things like that is going to be a very good point hold composition for most of your squads. But a note on that, right? We are running public platoons, and that means we're going to have people who either, you know, they want to run a different class, or it's just taking more time for people to get into the classes that you're asking for. So getting perfect platoon composition for, you know, the most efficiency is going to be tough, but you ask for it, you explain the importance of each class, you know, telling people, hey, we want lots of medics because we want lots of revives, we want infiltrators because we want radar, things like that. And if you explain the, the importance of why you want them and, you know, how many-ish, people people will generally follow that. So moving on once again, once you've gotten all that analysis done, which is going to take a few minutes, a lot less time than I've taken to explain here, You've gotten all the analysis done, you've checked your platoon composition, you've got people being nice and cohesive, you need to actually figure out what base you want to go for, right? And you'll have a good idea of where you want to go just based on looking at the map like you did earlier, like I explained earlier. So let's use, like th this is what I was talking about, we're not getting double teamed at the moment, so it's, it's hard to explain um, without a good visual, but if we were being double teamed right now, if we could call it that with the way the map looks right now. What base would I go for next? Uh, yeah, it's actually really hard because we're doing really well in terms of map, but let's... Maybe that plan? Maybe... Maybe around 20 minutes, we will get double digits. Yeah. 
I'm going to keep rolling along here, though. I don't want to wait until things actually happen to explain this, I, but yeah, probably Tech Plant. I don't know why, but usually it's around the 30 minutes when they start the double team. Yeah, it's... Why. There's a couple of reasons for that. One being that it's, it's just enough time for the alert to go on and us to push up enough that it's, you know, it's enough time for people to realize, oh, we're getting push really far in, and so they start pushing back a lot harder. Um, but it's also just a psychological thing where, oh, there's only 30 minutes left, so we, we better start, like, actually pushing instead of just farming or whatever. So there's, there's, there's reasons for that for sure. But yeah, so Tech Plant is definitely something, it's... Let's, let's, let's say it like this. You guys want to go for the edge, right? It's going to be a lot easier to go for the edge than through the middle, so you can avoid being attacked by both factions at the same time. So with the map looking like this, and like I said, it's a bad example because we're not actually being double teamed, but Tech Plant, or defending Root House and then moving on to Stockpile, or moving from Tech on Storage, just next to Root House, and going for Karen Station so we can get another big base. So places like that is what I would go for, and your really nice example for that is is just like um, we're getting big bases, right? We're defending our tech plant, or we'd be going for Karen Station, or extending our our territory onto the edges for Beetle Stockpile. So that's that's kind of the type of thinking you want to have when you're actually being double teamed. You know, push on the edge as much as possible keep things even by going for the middle as you need to, but definitely the edge is something you want to go for, and definitely push for those stronghold bases, alert timer permitting. When you've decided what base you want to go for, you want to check and see what spawns you have already, right? Do they, is there already Sunder spawns there? Is there a router already there? If not, you definitely want to, once again, rally your platoon. Tell them, hey guys, I'd like to see Sunder Responds coming from so-and-so base, so if we were going for a current station, that'd be Tack on Storage. I'd like to see Sunders coming from Tack on Storage, and if we have any router runners, if you happen to have those, you can ask them to move ahead as well. We'll get into some other other ways to get onto bases as well. Actually, one of my favorite ways is the Valk Drop, it's just the fastest way to get onto a base, but we'll get more onto that in a little bit. I think that pretty uh, well actually covers that. So let's go ahead and move on to the actual strategy and tactics, right? And the number one thing is, if I can sum up everything I'm about to say, it's going to be attacking a base in full force, right? Just, just spam everything if you can, get your if you're on a point, get your deployables up while you're traveling. Make sure you know people have enough nanites to do what they need to do, things like that. But let's say you're on a point. Actually, let's. I'm going to take this time to actually demonstrate it because we've been sitting here and you guys have been listening to me talking for so long. Let's go redeploy. Let's actually find a base and try and demonstrate this. So if I could have you all redeploy, let's go and look at this here. Thanks. C point on Hatcher Air Station is a good one, uh, there Horace. There go. Yes. That's a that's a good example right there. Hatcher, I'm not seeing it. I'm looking at Vex Biologics. That's not the right one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. In in our territory, I see. So yeah, everybody, go ahead and redeploy to Hatcher. I'll give you guys 30 seconds for everybody to get in here. I'll kind of explain what we're doing while we're doing that. So, let's say we're going to go for C point. We've got a couple of options that we can do here, and a couple of things to be aware of. So number one, while we're here in this spawn room, there is the bridge that's on top of us, and if there are enemies there, it's going to be very, very hard to get from our main spawn to the C point. Which brings me to my next very, very important point, is teleporters. Teleporters are one of the best ways to move around a base. So if I can get everybody to take the teleporter, we now have a clear line to the C point. 
So depending on what people or what the, our opponents are doing, I might call for a max crash from here. It's a bit of a distance from here to C point, so I might call for a max crash depending on just how bad it is. But let's assume it's not for a second uh, and assume there, we are the actually on like the point, the and I'll explain and my uh, the actual point I wanted to make here. So we're all on C point, and I'm going to demonstrate this exactly as I would if I were leading a platoon. So we're all on point, we've got enemies all around us, I'd like people to check to see what they have in their slots. If you guys have or ordnance dampeners, I'd like them around each of the rooms in this point, some downstairs, some down upstairs. I'd like to see beacons up from each squad on the stairs, thank you, thank you. And if we can, if you guys have sky shields equipped, let's get those on the stairs, cover our beacons. With those placed, medics, if you guys have your shield rechargers, place those as well. Those are going to be very, very helpful in keeping our shields up. And engineers, make sure your ammo packs are out. Right, so that's, that's some very, very basic equipment that is going to help a lot for our point hold. And yeah, I see some baby gates going up as well. Those are also so important tools from the engineer. Yes, thank you for reminding me. So yeah, infiltrators as well. You guys have things to drop as well. Your trackers and your recon darts. Yeah, there we go. Who has ever placed them? Charlie, nice. So this this right here is just awesome for a point hold, right? Assuming we got on here, the, the opponents is going to have a very, very hard time getting onto this. So what's your stance on the best positioning to have medics in? Uh, like within the actual building? Yeah, so we're taking hold of this point. Let me heal you. Break out the B way point hold manual. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it is a public platoon, and I will definitely tell people, you know, hey, we need more people on the stairs, or there's people coming from the stairs. I'll tell my medics, you know, hey, we've got guys dying here, so please move over here. But I'm, I'm definitely going to do it uh, play by play and explaining things as I go, rather than tell people. Um, you know, I'd like just this position, and and I and I really, really want to explain to them um, as I'm going, rather than um, how do I say it? Rather than leaving it up to them and and hoping that they know what to do, if that makes sense. Kind of just once at the very beginning of the point hold. So I guess my question, for example, my initial thought is where I'm at right now is Viper 921 is the best place for a medic. Like I'd have an engineer set up a gate and I'd basically make sure my medic is alive if everyone else dies. I think if you want to get any more in detail than just a squad holds a door or something, you're going to want to look into like hunter killer strats or something. You're not going to get that cohesion out of public squads. Yeah, you're not going to be able to explain, micromanage individual people like that really. Yeah, as as far as, as far as 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 far as positioning is concerned, I think the the only important keynote that you you should give to your medics and it, it's valid for for the entire platoon actually is just to tell them to stay away from doors and windows. As long as you're as long as you're telling that, uh, you know, repeating it several times, your medics should be good enough. Self preservation. Yep. 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 Exactly. Yeah, very, very good points. So, we've got our points set up here, guys. Let's say... We're gonna do a couple uh, of things here. Yeah. I, I think Weller had a question there. So, I've always heard you, um, it's better practice to not deploy directly on the ground and to deploy on objects so that grenades don't knock them out. Is that true? Yeah, so for ordnance dampeners, definitely for other deployables, yeah, Bas basically the answer is yes. If you guys can put them on things, like if you guys see where I am right here, uh, I think this is south side of the building, I've got a shield charger, it's just, just a little bit off, off the floor, so as many deployables as you can get off the floor, just to stay away from grenades and stuff, definitely much, much better. There's only going to be so many places that you can do that, so... Um, only so many places that, only, not so many places, only so many things that you can place them, and just because you can't 
place deployables one over the other. You know, you're going to have some people who just have to put things on the floor. But the other important thing is that there are going to be some places that don't have things you can place them up on top of, and so you you need to put them on the floor and keep them spread out. So like if we come where is this? I can't see because of all the people in here. It's northwest side. So northwest side of the building. We've got three, I think I see. Two two shield rechargers, two ordnance dampeners. And because of the there's a specific minimum range that things need to be away from each other, right? So if I wanted a nice spread out um, deployable setup like this, this this actually isn't that bad. It makes it so that we have everything covered without... Um, it's, it's kind of the same thing with Sundays, right? You want to make sure Sundays are as close to the point as possible, but if you have two Sunders that are, you know, you, you want them both in okay spots without taking away from the efficiency of having multiple spawns, you put them as close to each other as possible, as close to the spot where you want them to be. Um, but yeah, still far enough away from each other that you can get them both up. And the same thing applies to these deployables. You have them as close to the the most efficient spots, but you also keep them far enough away from each other that you can actually put them up. And that was a very, very long-winded answer for a question that probably could have been, been answered with, yes. <laughs> Appreciate it, thank you. Alright, so, yeah. Demonstrating a couple things here, guys. So, visualizing this for one moment, we're on the point here. We get pushed off, right? This is a double team. The alert timer is going. We might have 20 minutes left on it where every single second matters. We, I will always, 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 when I'm really, really concerned about alert time and going for the win, I am going to ask everyone to redeploy. Drop what you're doing. If you're in a vehicle, if you're in infantry, doesn't matter. Hit your U key. We are going to move off of here, and we are going to go somewhere else if we get pushed off here. Reason being, if we... Actually, let's use, let's use this as an example. If we get pushed off the point, they got on here, they have 96 plus here, there's not a whole lot of chance of us actually getting it back. Let's use the spawn room, actually, just the main spawn room. If we even get pushed back to our main spawn room and we keep this fight going, we are asking for Pop to stay here to try and farm us, and we are asking them to continue down our lattice. What we're essentially asking for is a Zerg to form. This is not what we want. So what I want would want people to do, rather than going to the main spawn and try and keep this fight going, assuming there's no chance of actually getting back on, right? This if if a router's coming back, I might ask for people to wait in the spawn room and kind of hold their attention there until we get a router back up. But if not, I would ask people to redeploy off and just go to another fight, right? Keep things moving, go to Hate Skydock. Is, it, is another base that we're actually currently about to lose. So I'd ask people to redeploy and go straight there, because just time is of the essence, and we don't want to be asking for people to uh, farm us and form a Zerg. So that's one example. Now, more positive example, if we are on the point and we take the base, it's going to be kind of the same thing, but instead of moving off to another base, we want to, uh, we want to do a couple of steps. One, we want to make sure that they don't start the cap, you know, if, if sometimes it'll happen. Sometimes you'll be on the point, you'll take the base, and then there'll be two seconds from pushing you off the, off the point, and the base is yours, but they're back on point. And sometimes, sometimes that just happens. But assuming it doesn't, and you have a good enough point hold, you want people to stay on that, and go ask for a few people from each squad, uh, especially if you have people it, with routers, definitely want to ask them, to go to the next base over and start a back cap. Once you do that, once you get the cap started, I'm going to ask everyone, just, just like as if we were pushed off and we didn't take the base, I'm going to ask everyone to redeploy, get on the router, get on the beacons that those few people from each squad will have put up, and just go there right, right away. It's, it's just time is of the essence. It keeps cohesion up, you know? You don't want to get farmed at a base you've just taken either, and so you want to keep moving. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. Let's Let's simulate this. We've just taken the base. Everybody hit your U keys. We're going to Aiken Data Hub. I'd like everyone there. We'll just use the hard spawn as an example, but let's say it's a router. And the reason you gotta redeploy fast is because there's still there's still that timer. Like I think it's 
five or six seconds just moving for, you know, to this hard spawn, but it would be 10 seconds for a router or a beacon. So you guys want to redeploy right away to get that timer out. And then we Probably do this. Up. Yeah, there you go. So same thing again, guys, right? We're here, we're at our sunder, say. We want to move right back onto the point. Go, go, go. Time is of the essence. We want those same deployables up. We'd have probably only like 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds more than we took to get here for the enemy to f figure out what we're doing and respond. So we we want to set things up as quickly as possible. So medics, get your shield recharges up. Put ordnance stampers up. Make sure beacons are up. Just everything. Infiltrators, yep, see darts going up. Good, good, good. And for the most part, it's this, right? It's, it's all fast moving. It's all keeping your squad and platoon moving, stay cohesive, and getting things done as quickly as possible. Yeah, and guys, uh, a quick heads up is that uh, alerts, they, they usually will go down to just a few seconds uh, between a loss and a win. So w whenever we're calling backups, uh, which is probably the most valuable strategy in any kind of alert, especially in the double team situation, every single second counts. You, you sometimes will have less than a fraction of a second that's going to stay between a save uh, for, like, for you to break a zerg or anything like that. So make sure if you guys want to be a proactive player, you have like an ejection seat uh, scythe, uh, ejection seat with racers, uh, and just the boosters for you to rush into the forward base. Anytime a back cap is called, make sure you try to get there as fast as you can. Don't just wait for a spawn option, be the proactive person, right? If the, the entire platoon is just waiting for the logistics to come up, you, you are not going to get the back cap. So be, be the person that flies in, get the back cap first, and then drop the beacon for your squad. You, you can really win an alert by yourself if you are that proactive guy. So, And if you are running that, uh, stealth is really handy for that too, as a guy who spends like half the game running routers. Absolutely. Well said, guys. Stealth and max attitude. Okay, yeah. so Horace, I I have a I have an interesting question here, and I'm I'm gonna make sure I ask this here if you don't mind, Horace, and you you can go ahead and explain it yourself. But I I feel like we may have a few newer players in here that might not be entirely sure what a back cap actually stands for. So do we have anybody here that's not familiar with the term back cap and doesn't know what it is? Is that when you wear your hat backwards? Yeah, yeah, Horace, I, I think I think you can feel free and, and go ahead. Like, explain what a back cap is just real quick. That way we, we can get it out of the way. Sure, yep, sounds good. So, back cap, let's go open your map again, guys. So we've got Hade Skydock, right? TNC is actually about to take it from us, which is unfortunate. But what this means... Let's go take it back! E with 10 seconds, 96 plus, I, yeah, I'll, I'll... Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Chad um, SKL it, man. But for the time being, because they have Hayes Skydock, we can't take Shock Intel Hub. But so that you know, they've they've um stopped us from back capping them. If we if they yeah, they're they're kind of on the offense, so it's easier to explain from the NC's perspective. If NC moves from Hayes Skydock over to construction site beta, and I'll move platoon we went over to construction site if they start taking construction site then Hade Skydock are yeah Hade Skydock is um, you know we can't take it because they have a back cap they have a capture that's behind a point that we want so we can't move forward and take Hade Skydock until we clear the capture that's behind or back at construction site beta. So actually there they go, they've done it. So they have officially back capped us from taking Hade Skydock. And until we clear that it's it's not a backwards capture, but it's 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 a 
behind capture is kind of better to, to see it that way. And it just means that we can't take a base that's in front of it. Yeah, it's literally locked, so you can't take the next base. There's another example. This like if we this took looks... Arcane, uh, uh, a can uh, Southern Labs back, and then we try to go b uh, back at w uh, Woodman ASC Labs, it will stop Nason's defiance. One thing I'd actually like to say in reference to backups on multi-point bases, you only need to capture one point in order for it to be in order to exactly. begin a back. In, to begin a backup. So say the situation was reversed, right? Let's say there was 96 NC on construction site. If we had one point, doesn't even need to start a cap. Get one point on Hate Skydock, they could not start the cap on construction site. I can heal you. Yeah, very, very good point. As long as you just have, you know, four point base, three point base, split peak um, would have the four. Just holding the one makes it so that they can't take the base that's, that's uh, behind you. So definitely, definitely try to send people ahead. If you can just get that one cap, it's already back in. Alright, so before we move on, does anybody have any other questions? Because otherwise we are going to redeploy and uh, go on with another demonstration, actually. Wonderful, wonderful. Alright, so everyone go ahead and redeploy. Some theory first. So we've covered, you know, what you do when you get on the point as a platoon lead or a squad lead. We've covered what you want to do in terms of back capping, right? So moving forward and taking a base before they uh, get on the point that you just captured and keep that safe. So now comes, well, how, how do you actually get there, right? How do you go from base to base to base as quickly as possible? And this comes back to the dock drops, like I was saying, right? So if I want people to move, I'm going to ask people yeah, so there's a few different ways. If you want people to move and drop those beacons ahead of you, like I said, uh, to get a back cap started, I'll ask them to drive sites, right? Sites are just our, our fastest vehicle and they'll get there, they'll get those people there as quickly as possible. But if you want to move a whole platoon as quickly as possible during a double team, you're going to want Valkyries. And the reason you're going to want Valkyries, aside from anything else, in terms of moving a whole platoon, is, is just its speed. Um, there's there's kind of a reoccurring theme here is is just speed right you want to be just a little bit faster than your opponents so that all of these actions combined by the end of the alert you've got the win so let's go ahead and do this where's a good base that we can do this let's let's go ahead and drop on construction site beta so go ahead and hit your yukis guys if I can get I uh, squad these and someone else let's get two per squad up from Hatcher Air Station, and we're going to drop on Construction Site Beta. We don't want to lose that base. Time is of the essence. Let's go with those, those Valkyries up. Uh, where are we pulling from? We'll be pulling from Hatcher Air, Air Station. Station. Alpha Squad Waypoint. Over to Platoon Waypoint. And we want to drop directly on Platoon Waypoint to have the best chance of getting in there. The actual Shall point. Good, good, good. Yeah, and remembering oh, Platoon Composition, one. guys. Make sure we have lots of medics. Few engineers, few infills. And the reason we want a dock drop rather than go from the hard spawn is because they most likely already have a lot of people guarding that area. So if we can drop. 20 right seconds. Up. Yep, go, go, go. Remember, guys, that if you press space and forward, kind of tilt to the right a bit, your Valkyrie goes a little bit faster. Bail. Here we go, 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 go. go. Rush the point. 10 seconds. Hold the sprint key. Back here by the uh, spawn point, and that was absolutely fucking beautiful. Okay, good job, guys. Keep the revives going. Push forward, push forward. Yeah, that might be a wipe there, guys. But that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. That kind of speed, right? Valks up. I saw people calling those out when they were getting their Valks spawned. That's that's so important so people know who's pulling what, um, so that people don't end up pulling more than they need, and just dropping in you know 30 seconds or less. We 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 would have had a little bit more time there, hopefully, if I hadn't also explained things. So in the real thing. You know, you just go, platoon lead says, hey, we're dropping here, get Valks up, people call them, you spawn in, and you drop. It's it's just get in there as soon as possible. So that's definitely the way I like to travel best during double teams. And actually, something, a note, actually, that I made for myself here, because it's really, really important. 
another reason why deploying or redeploying rather hitting your U key and redeploying is um, so important when when you need to is because after you redeploy the beacons that are up or the routers that are up the spawn timer um, so yeah actually let's put let's put this, some context into here you've got some people that are running routers they got onto a new base let's say we went you know we want a router here on construction site beta if we're fighting back at alpha pit so alpha squad waypoint and we get a router up on platoon way i'm actually going to call people to redeploy 10 seconds before the router goes up not when it goes up but before if we can and the reason being the spawn timers for sunders for routers for anything so router, for example, is, is 10 seconds before you can spawn on it. It's not when the the router goes up that's the timer. It's how long you've been in the map screen. So if you're in the map screen for 10 seconds before the router goes up, you will be able to instantly deploy onto the router as soon as the router goes up. And like I said, it's just a little bit of extra speed. So what definitely just wanted to note that. That was a good tidbit. Oh, hey, Percent, didn't even see you come in. I have a dumb question. Yeah, go for it. What's the easiest way to know if your squad already has a beacon down if someone didn't call it out? Like, is there an easy way to see it on the minimap or anything? It pops up on your screen saying blank has, so and so has placed a beacon. Oh, no, so. Yes. Best way, best way to see it, guys. Uh, if you all redeploy, if you guys are looking at your redeploy screen, uh, every single squad redeploy option. So basically, the places where you can redeploy, they are tied directly to your squads, are gonna show up in a green box in the top left side of your redeploy screen. So if you're looking at your redeploy screen, you're going to see all of your spawn options in the map. And every single one that's tied to your squad is going to show up on the top left side of your screen. So if you have a beacon up, you should see uh, the squad spawn option for your squad beacon up there. So everybody put a beacon up now for, for the people that are on the map screen. And if you are in a squad that's putting up a beacon, they will show up up there together with the the current base that's the platoon waypoint as you guys can see we we're gonna have a spawn option for the base where the platoon waypoint is and as people put up the beacons they're gonna show up in that squad option window right there yeah as a uh, i was more thinking like when you're running around shooting yeah when you're running around you can you can either hit h to expand your mini map and see if there is a green beacon around uh, a little symbol or can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, or you can go to the, the chat channel in the top left and switch over to squad, and it will say who placed a beacon last. Yeah, and if it says it up in the chat bar, that is only your squad. So that means your squad has deployed something. You can also hear the deploy sound when anybody in your squad yeah. places it. So it's just paying attention to your chat and the sound, and then looking yeah, on the map. It's very subtle, though. Yeah, but if you, so. yeah, yeah, if you miss it, you can check for the, the icon on the minimap, and you can also check the chat to see if someone placed a beacon now, if you both played at the same that. time, there's nothing you can do yeah. about that. Yeah, but Black Dra what Black Dragon said is also important, though. It, if you are being a good squad member, if you say or type that you have placed a beacon, or also when it's been destroyed, so keep that information updated. Absolutely, cool. those are good tips. Yeah, well said, guys. So, last couple of notes on strategy, guys. Here is going to be, I've been saying this whole time about, you know, not staying at fights that you're getting farmed at and things like that. I would say one of the only times where something like that is effective, where you're staying at a fight and you're being farmed, you know, it's not, it's not fun, it doesn't look like it's effective right away, but one of the only times you will want to do that is when you see a base elsewhere that your faction is taking that you really, really want. So if you're at a base that's not so important and you are holding more pop than you have there, that is less pop for your opponents to have to drop and defend a base that you're taking elsewhere. So it's securing the population of the other factions and keeping them in a place where they're not being as effective. So it's kind of, it's all about reading the map and deciding where is my platoon, where is the population that I have with me most effective.
aka pop sinking. Yep. So yeah, I would say that's one of the only times there, so just an example. We're holding... Where is a good example? Are we actually taking anything because we're holding somewhere? Well, a good example would have been construction site, but that flipped. Yes, that's true. By the way, this is what a double team looks at, like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, if, if you guys... Actually, this is a good time to explain... Maybe I'm going to explain it quickly. Um, and if I don't explain it well enough, you guys can certainly ask about it after. Um, but if you guys go into your map screen, you'll see in the top right, there's statistics. Um, and under that, there's a Hassan population tab. And to the right of that, there's a tab with a filter with a, um, you know, cardinal symbol. Or not cardinal symbol, you know, Basically cardinal direction. Funnel. It, it's a funnel. Funnel. There we go. Thank you. Yep. And you want to click on that that little symbol there, and that'll bring up things like terrain, facilities, different checkboxes, and the one thing I want you guys to pay attention to is the heat maps at the very bottom in that selection, and if you just click ally plus enemy activity in that selection, you would see that there's a, a decent fight happening at Genesis terraforming between the NC and the TR, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of fighting going on between them. Whereas for our side, we have a fight going on at construction site that's a decent size. We have a fight going on at Aiken Biolab, Aiken Southern Labs, Broken Vale. So we have we have six or seven bases that are being attacked. Um, so this this is definitely a double team here. We've also hit that 30 minute mark, uh, like was mentioned before. So this this is definitely uh, we're getting hit hard for starting the alert and starting with the most territory. So yeah, definitely everything I've taught you guys so far, everything I've mentioned is definitely things you want to think about if you were going to break out of this. How often do you guys normally split up your uh, platoons into different, like, factions, uh, different squads capturing different points to counter stuff like that? So I'm actually going to be getting to that in just a moment here. Um, yeah, well, actually, let me, let me get to that first. <laughs> That's the question. I'd probably preface whatever oh. answer you're going to give with it's heavily dependent on how much cohesion your squad has. This is true, yep. But assuming for a moment that you have 100% cohesion between your squads, you will split your squads off. Um, like, the premise here is going to be making use of every single second in the alert, right? Making the most out of where your population is, and sometimes that means you see you're on a base, you really, really want it, but you're not getting a whole lot of resistance, so you know you're going to take it. What that means is that you have population to spare in your platoon, so you can ask, you know, Bravo Squad, hey, I need you guys to go start another fight on Tack on Storage while Alpha Charlie Delta stays here at Construction Site Beta, just so that things keep moving, right? We were fine on Construction Site, we want another time it started on Tack on Storage. Actually, uh, attacking Tack on Storage serves two purposes. It back caps. We talked about that. It backcaps them from taking Fort Drexler, which is one of our bigger bases that we don't want to have a fight at. And two, it, it keeps the timer going, right? We want to take as many bases as possible before the end of the alert. So in general, that's that's when you want to ask your squads to split off, is when you have population to spare. Uh, Horace, can I add something real quick there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, guys, true to the PLs around here as well, another thing that you, you guys should try to keep in mind once you guys are preparing your platoon for an alert, uh, if you are in the middle of the alert, that's going to be harder for you to do, but while you are setting up something that's extremely valuable and, you know, can, can give you a, an amazing reward during the alert, is to preset one of your squads to be your cohesive squad to have one fast mover squad uh, i usually do it on delta and what i mean by that is you look for your best squad leader someone you already know from skl or someone that's responsive if you don't know a lot of people it's probably going to be one of the higher ups inside of skl you basically get a good squad leader someone you trust and you give him the good players in your platoon. And you can either do that by just dragging the ASP 100 battle ranks that you see in your platoon window, or you can just ask, 
like go around your platoon and ask hey guys delta squad is going to be the fast redeploy squad you guys going to be moving forward for me if you guys want to be on delta squad and keep moving forward be my fast response team let me know give me your squad and number and i'm going to move you to delta that way you know that you have a highly cohesive group to work with separated from the rest of the platoon that's going to give you a lot of flexibility you go. Yeah, let's let's continue here guys so that's that's it for all the strategy and tactics guys uh, for our leads keep that in mind use those and you're definitely going to see a lot of success in taking back territories during a double team um, i'm going to move here into a few more reminders and tools so one of the first things is going to be your offense and defense request we talked about making the most out of your population this doesn't just you know it doesn't just include your platoon you can have things that will influence your blueberries and i'm going to explain what blueberries means that just means anyone who's not in your platoon they can be in another platoon or they can be someone that's just in your faction farming you know they're 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 just there playing solo so that's a blueberry and you can influence them by placing down these offense and defense markers and just telling them hey you know i'd like people to go there um and and you know, start a fight, support a fight, whatever it is. And the way that you're going to do that, actually, first let me let me put one down so you guys can all see what that looks like. So if you guys look at Platoon Waypoint, and you guys, it's that construction site beta, I'm going to put a offensive request that will ask people to go there and support the attack there right next to it. Did I hear put down offensive request? Yeah, I did. <laughs> So yeah, you guys will see right beside the platoon waypoint, we've got an offensive request there. Just the uh, the crosshair marker, whatever you want to call it. And I would ask all of my squad leads to put them up at a certain base. It can be construction site beta here. There we go, we've got four on the map, all my squad leads. And that's just going to, well it's going to do two things. It's a visual um, thing that just tells people, hey look, you know, looks like there's going to be a big fight there and someone in a squad or multiple squads, depending on the number of requests, is looking for support there, is looking for um, offensive support on a base specifically. The other thing it does that's also very useful is it influences the join combat button. So if you guys look on your map, you will see join combat, get to a fight now in, in subtext, just on your lower left, and that will take you to, I'm not sure exactly how it works, basically the biggest fight that's around unless you happen to influence another fight with offensive requests. If you, somehow, I've never seen it, but if you could get 100 offensive requests on any base, I guarantee you, you will basically tell the game, you know, please make join combat, let people spawn at that base. So just putting down four offense requests helps so much to, to you know, get everyone else in your faction in the know of what's important and where you'd like them to be. And the same can be said for the defense requests. So let's put squad leads like uh, defense request on Roothouse Distillery, Southwest. And it's going to do the exact same thing as the offense requests. It's just a, a, a different marker. It's the same thing. It does the same thing. It just looks different and it just helps people visualize uh, what needs defense if it's our base or what needs offense if it's. Um, a base that's not ours. You can also put offense and defense requests together on the same hex. So if you want eight requests on the same hex, you can do that. Um, quick little thing before I get ready for more questions is to explain how you get these offense and defense requests. If you're wanting to squad lead and you haven't yet, or you are a squad lead and haven't looked at it, highly recommend getting these. The way you're going to do that is to go into your platoon menu or your social tab and right under platoon you will see squad certs and in squad certs you will see those request reinforcements it costs 200 certs you will also see green orange purple yellow smokes which will be 50 certs each um, and those to put it really simply it's universally accepted in planet side you see a smoke there's probably a sunder spawn um, there for people to take out it's i've i've I can probably count on my fingers the number of times that it hasn't been a Sunder Spawn that's being marked, but that's basically all the time what it's used for. It can be a player base. Yeah, it's a point of interest. Yeah, generally speaking. So yeah, that'll be the offense-defense requests. 
the other thing is just a quick reminder, you know, if your squad doesn't have a beacon up, this is especially true for your for the squad leads, uh, more than the platoon lead, because the squad lead can see who puts up a beacon and when, is just make sure you always, always, always have a beacon up. Routinely check, do I have a squad beacon up? Did it die and it hasn't been replaced? You know, just make sure that's always, always up. Uh, explain join combat. The next thing, guys, and probably one of the more important points here that I want to make is going to be using your voice um, in a way that is positive, in a way that really makes people want to follow you into suicides, uh, max crashes, different things like that. So what I mean by that, you know, it's a double team. It's going to be stressful, especially if you, you know, go big for it, go big on cutoffs and things like that. You're going to get pushed a lot. Um, but keeping calm, it being the most important thing, and being energetic about what you're doing, right? If you are getting set up for a max crash, you want to be stressed. You don't want to be stressed out saying, you know, oh come on guys, you know, quickly, quickly, or, or we're gonna lose. You know, what, what are we doing? You, you don't want to do that. You just, you know, be calm. Hey guys, we have 30 seconds to get a max crash going. So I'd like Max's medics, NGs. I'm sure a lot of you know have seen max crashes before. Um, and you know, you you just you just keep moving. You're doing the best you're doing with with the time that you're able to put in. Everyone in the platoon is doing it. There's there's no need to add uh, any more stress than than the game is most certainly already giving. And yeah, aside being from being called, just being energetic with the max crashes. You know, if you're about to get onto a point, but you need people to hold down that sprint key. You know, let people let people feel that um, you're you're getting shot at left and right, but call out to people. You know, hey guys, we're almost there. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Sprint, sprint, sprint. You know, and it's just creating that atmosphere in the platoon that's positive, that's um, encouraging people to do what they need to do to the best of their ability. Yeah, emotion makes the game much better. It, it, it's a, a world of difference if you have someone that's being entertaining by putting emotion into the game. Uh, it, it's easy to overdo it if you get carried away, and I do that a lot, but it, it definitely makes a world of a difference. If you're doing a max crash and you hear your PL yelling at you, like, Get your asses in there! I will kill myself if I see it door! Get your asses in there! It, it really makes the experience much, much better. and. But keeping it positive, right? Positive feedback, even in the failure, letting your platoon know that they did a good job and not you know, being negative with your platoon is the second part of that. You, you don't need negativity in your platoon, just make sure you're always positive. They did their best, even if you fail, as Forrest said, double teams are frustrating. You don't need to double up on that. So make sure you're positive with your platoon. And the big thing that we want to impart here is that, like, everything the Horace has talked about in this training beforehand will not work if you do not have a good attitude while trying to handle a double team. You can, yes. have, the, you can have the best laid plans in the world, you can do everything right, but if you do it with a really shitty attitude and make your platoon hate you, then you will not succeed. So this is the most important point he could talk, possibly talk about. Like, attitude is everything. For sure. I might add something on that. Yep, for sure. So, the other thing, too, is you've got to give people good perspective. Um, meaning that, you know, in a double team, you're likely to lose, right? So you don't have the hope that you're going to win. But you can tra teach this as we're teaching, tra we're, we're, we're basically training and practicing. Because if they are double teaming us and we almost win, that means when they aren't, we will definitely win. So, whatever we do here... We basically treat it as we're getting ready for the next fight when it's going to be fair and we're going to have a better chance. Yeah, for sure. I'd like to expand on that and just say it's, you know, you are you might lose one alert, two alerts, three alerts, but it's it's a game of hundreds and hundreds of alerts, right? There have been thousands since Planetside came out, so one alert ending, Brilliant. it's it's one experience. Yeah, and you might, because um, like we've seen this before, that people kind of gotten down on thinking that the Vondu are losing a lot. It, knowing the actual stats, which there's a website that tracks them, the Vondu are something like 37, 38% right now. Of all, 
you know, what what it tells you is you can basically give people some hard information when they start when you start hearing negativity. It's like you know we win the most alerts, guys, thirty eight percent. So we might not win this one, but overall in the last week we've won X out of Y. If you you know kind of track that. Yeah, and on on top of that, guys, it, th there needs to be kind of a shift of mentality from the leadership down as well. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's a game. It's not only about wins. We, we're not here to get numbers. Uh, you guys should try to have in mind. Well, the reason they don't team us is because they feel that that's their best chance to win. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, it, it, for us as players playing this game, it's I I for example would take a hard fought alert where we lost, but you know it was a close alert. It was down to the last second. Then, then you know, just getting an easy win where we just zerg down the lettuce without resistance. So, get getting good alerts, getting fun out of them, it's still the priority. Make sure you I tell your. I record my batteries. Yeah, that's it. I was gonna say, I think a really important part to that is making sure, as a leader, that if you are in a losing alert, just try to get out of positions where you're getting farmed, because that's what has the biggest impact on morale, is just seeing that redeploy screen over and over. Um, you can lose an alert, still have fun, and still have good fights, but trying yeah. to just throw your platoon at hopeless fights is really um, demoralizing. For sure. I'm going to go ahead and run through the last of my points here really quickly, guys. we running, running for a while, and I'd like to finish before the alert. Um, so at the end, I will take any questions you guys have saved up for that. So last things is going to be, you know, you as the platoon leader is go are going to be talking the most, very, very likely, in a double team. You're the person who's directing people. You're the person who's going to be giving the most information. That said there will be idle chatter, most likely, in your platoons. And when some of that happens, that's fine, you know, as long as the conversations are on topic, are, are you know, good conversations. And you can just as easily say, hey guys, you know, good conversation. I need you guys to refocus your, your attention for a few minutes while we finish taking this base, right? Um, people want to have, have a good time. These are public platoons. They're meant to be places to socialize. And so just giving people, uh, you know, th the point I'm trying to make here is is don't be so hard on people. It's it's an alert and you want to win, but it's also just about having that social experience um, and having a good time. So just recentering people's attention when you need to. So again, just quickly moving on here. Some things, uh, more, more, t more tools, actually a couple of things that I skipped over somehow is anvils. Right? We talked about that a little bit when you're flying Valkyries over, is getting beacons up and dropping anvils. Quick note for all of my broodlords in this platoon is you guys have access to dropping those anvils, all the light anvils through to the heavy anvils. Um, so placing those on the map when you are getting set up on a point is really, really nice to have a good spawn that also allows people outside of your platoon, right? Those blueberries we talked about. Uh, to also have a place to spawn that's not just your beacons. So there's that. Uh, oh, okay, so yeah, one other thing I actually skipped over, guys. If I can get everybody to spawn, redeploy first, hit your Yuki. Let's get set up on the non-marsh compound. I don't think I can talk about double teams without explaining uh, max crashes at least once. Because you're going to use them most likely at least a few times during a double team. So if I can get everybody here at Nonmarsh Compound, there's no um, other faction pop here, so we should be able to get everyone here without uh, without needing beacons or other spawns or anything. So I'm going to start talking about it now uh, while I'm waiting for everybody to get here. So what a max crash is, uh, I explained it briefly a little bit ago, but it means Essentially, you want lots of maxes, you want lots of engineers, and you want lots of medics, right? And so if we have two minutes left on a cap, or a minute left on a cap sometimes even, and we're just not with our regular force making it past those doors into the point room, I'm going to call people and, and say, hey, everybody into the main spawn room, I'd like people to hold maxes, medics, and engineers, and in 30 seconds, or X timer, 
we're going to all leave at the same time and make our way to that point, right? And the idea is to have those maxes as a force multiplier all working together. So it's a force force multiplier, right? It's not one max, it's not two maxes. It can be 20 maxes plus engineers and medics to keep them up and just force your way through those doors. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration on this, guys. If we're facing another platoon here on Narmash compound and we want into that point, but they just have a lot of setup, they probably have their own shield uh, regenerators from their medics, ordnance dampers, that same setup that we use. We're going to counter that and ask people to pull maxes, pull medics, pull engineers. We're going to leave in 10 seconds and charge into that point. Right, so as soon as we've got all set up, I think everyone basically is here. I'm going to call countdown and we're going to charge and you guys are not going to stop sprinting. Three, two, one, everybody push, 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 follow PL. If I can find my way around here. This is not the right way. Where's the stairway? This way, Harris. <laughs> yeah, this way, Harris. Yeah, there you go, there you go. So charge into the point, guys. Straight, straight line. Start straight into the point. Maxes can take damage, right? They can, they're, they're the force multipliers that can take the most resistance to damage. We will force our way into the... Max is on the front! Okay. Max is on the front! Medic's behind! Medic, stay behind! There we go. Ooh, even have an NSO for a shield. Awesome. Revive, revive nades on point. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna die a lot, but we want those resonates out. Right, and then as soon as we get on here, it's a lot of the same stuff that we did when we dropped and we had more time. We just need to do it any quick, a lot quicker. So that means I'm going to call my medics. Get your shield rechargers up. Place ordnance dampers. Right. We want to secure this place as quickly as possible and make this territory ours. Right. So that's that's how Max Crash works. Yeah, guys, make sure you all remember to micromanage your platoons. You you guys here are a bunch of cohesive people. We have a platoon full of veterans. And you guys still went in medics first. So that, that should give you a good example right there. Maxes are slow. They're slower than any other infantry class. So the medics will overtake them while rushing the point. You need to make sure you're telling your platoon to let the, med the maxes inside first to tank the damage and the medics uh, to survive uh, for the crash. So make sure you tell your platoon that at least once uh, I would recommend repeating it multiple times while you're crashing medics behind, medics behind, mechs is first, mechs is first apparently it also might be a good idea to learn the base before you do a, base, a max crash true, no. yes yeah. platoon lead you personal. should scout yeah, the platoon lead should scout first uh, as the platoon is, is grouping up the platoon leader go out as an infiltrator or as, or as a light assault and make sure you have the, the route ready for, for yeah. you not to get, you know, yeah. Trust me, people, we all have done this back in my day I, and back in all of our days. I, before I would send the platoon somewhere for a crash, I would go there myself to kind of get an idea where I was leading them before I even opened my mouth just so I wouldn't, just so that I would know where we're going. Yeah, yeah. So feel free to scout out the base ahead of time if, you, uh, if you're not sure where, you, where the crash is going. Absolutely. Yeah, don't do what I didn't. Make a wrong turn because you will confuse your platoon. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the match. I just knew what he was talking about, so I followed him, and then it was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, glad, uh, glad you guys caught me. So yeah, that's Max crashes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go into some closing notes here, guys. If you guys don't mind, keep uh, you guys can keep experimenting with being in a Mac crash here in this room if you like, but I want to say a lot of the tactics that we just talked about, right, you'll find them in sweaty platoons, whether there's a multi uh, double team going on or not, right? It's, it's just the most effective, most um, time effective tactics you can use. It's, it's saving every second, it's making the most use out of everything to just give you the edge in that uh, alert. But, actually moving on from that, you have to decide what kind of atmosphere you want in your platoon, right? Just because there's an alert going on, just because there's a double team happening, doesn't mean that you need to move from being that chill platoon that's more focused on just being a group and having a good time, um, and switch over and instantly start using sweaty tactics, right? You can stay and do what you're doing as long as you're communicating to your platoon um, that that's what you want to do, right? You're going to have some people saying, you know, hey, w w like, there's a double team going, and as long as you say, 
actually, you know, this is a chill platoon, you can do that. We're, like, here with, with SKL, and a whole bunch of other, other of us do it as well, we don't have to go for the alert. You can just form an ar armor column because you want to. You can do air raids because you want to. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is that you need to decide what kind of atmosphere you want to have. Do you want to have, you know, take things lightly? Do you want to, uh, like I said, just focus on having a good time instead of uh, trying super hard, being super sweaty, and taking the alert? Um, or do you want to go for that alert and, and really push hard? But you don't want to make the switch, you know, halfway through your leading session because the people that have come to you have come to you and stayed because they liked how you were leading. So just definitely something to keep in mind. Um, as much as your voice affects how you know people respond to your orders and to you know just being in your platoon, the atmosphere you create from your goals affect that just as much. Um, other than that, you guys have to remember that there's double teaming and there's zerging, right? You guys might have seen zerging before. That's basically just a faction that has somehow, either naturally or artificially, just gotten 96 plus people on a certain hex and they're just driving down each and every hex, taking them as they go, um, you know, without stopping is kind of the idea of a zerg, is you just go. There's, there's no real fa uh, no real tactics to it, I should say, no strategy. It's just a, a numbers game, right? They have so many numbers, they're just hard to stop. Um, and how you deal with double teams is going to be different than how to deal with zergs, but that's not to say that dealing with zergs um, isn't going to happen during double teams. In fact, it can be the reason why there's a double team going on. And probably last note for the PLs before I get into a couple of things that you can do not being PL is don't burn out. Please, please, please don't burn out. If you guys are running alerts, you know, back to back, five in a row, and they're all double teams, you're going to burn out. So take a break between alerts. Ask people or ask someone to take PL temporary from you or temporarily from you. If you can, go stretch, grab, grab a glass of water, whatever you need to do. I need a glass of water soon. Touch too, grass. Actually. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Um, and make sure you take that break because you will burn out if you if you uh, yeah just run super sweaty tactics run it run a hard platoon for hours and hours um, it's happened to me it's happened to a lot of people I know um, and it's just it's no fun me. yeah absolutely oh, we won the alert and yep we won the alert yeah, I think we won the alert <laughs> 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 did we win the alert are you shitty dear God yeah. well, there's, there's a no lot of do we Good stuff. So on. Everyone in this <laughs> hope. Don't Okay, hold up, hope. guys. Clear comms, clear comms, please. So yeah, we won the alert. Yeah, That's GG no guys. I've ever seen one. <laughs> GG guys. Um, yeah. So that's. Please don't burn out. Is basically the thing that I wanted to say there. Um, and then in terms of what you can do, very very last notes, guys, before we end. If you're not a lead and you want to support your PL or your squad lead. Um, as much as possible, not as a lead. There are some things you can do, right? You can run routers. Um, you can like don't even don't even wait for your PL to ask for these things. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm getting at is you can support your PL by taking the initiative. Just tell your PL, hey, I'm getting a router base set up. You know, you'll be able to have a router be able to be placed in five minutes. Um, um, Horace, if I may say something on the just don't do it if your PL unless you're, you're just wait don't wait for your PL to ask. Yeah, sure. Um, I would always ask if they have one, because if you go set up a router base and there's like already like five, six router runners, there's really no point. I would love to have six routers. I've, yeah. I've had it. Yeah. it. It's horrible. It, it is if horrible might... having half a squad. I'll take seven. Routers. I'll take 48. There's, there's... <laughs> I'll take 40. You know what? You want to run a, a router platoon after this? Yeah, hold up here, guys. So that's that's going to base be based very much on preference, how many router runners you like. Like, I mean, you can go extreme like Prozine once, and you can just ask, hey, can I get everyone to run routers? That might not happen. It's not realistic, probably. But if you can do it, that, that that's awesome. That that would probably be my personal preference as well. Um, so it's just going to depend. You know, if people ask, do you want me to build a router base? You can tell them, hey, no, actually, I'd like you to, um, you know, help us here 
with this attack, you can tell them, hey, I'd like you to build a rotor base after this 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 base capture, you know, whatever it is. So it's all it's all your preference on that. Um, aside from building router bases, though, you can, like I said, it's just keeping that initiative. You can make callouts for your PL. Tell them, hey, I see um, a TR beacon. I see a Sunday. Uh, I see Max is coming in. Different things like that, and just just take as much of the load off of the PL of making those things happen um, as possible. I know for me personally, it's very helpful. Um, like, don't don't backseat. PL, don't uh, don't tell people you know. Hey, we should go here. Like everyone redeploy. Don't don't start making orders for the PL, but support your PL in making small callouts. Just max is incoming, things like that. It's it's so helpful. Um, Friendly reminder then, that squad leads can play smokes as well. Yep, squad leads can play smokes as well. Tell your your PL you know. Hey, here's a Sunday that I found. Um, and the very last note here, guys, before we can close off here is keep calm right not just not just the pl but everyone like orby was saying before if everyone's super positive if everyone is you know having a good time it doesn't matter if you lose it doesn't matter if you win um ultimately it's it's the experience rather than the number that says that you won or whatever that's really going to matter so stay positive be calm in the face of double teams and uh yeah so with that that is everything that I wanted to mention. Are there any questions? Hey, thanks a lot, man. That was a lot of good information. Yep, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was fucking brilliant for us.